I'm currently going through perimenopause and it's hell. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name's Claire, I'm a registered nurse. I'm currently working in general practice. I also do some work for the university as well. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about menopause with a specific focus on perimenopause because perimenopause is not spoken about out there and I feel like there's a lot more information that's needed for it. So firstly, what is menopause? Menopause is basically where somebody that's got a womb, a cervix, it's where you stop having your periods um, and you start to get a whole load of wide range varied symptoms. So it's where your hormones are sort of fluctuating and eventually your hormones fall to a, a really low level um, and you get no periods as a result of that. Uh, they sort of diagnose menopause through looking at your symptoms and your period changes. So if you've had no period for over 12 months, you're probably potentially menopausal unless you've got some sort of condition, things like that. So other things going on that can cause that as well. But alongside that, the symptoms are things like hot flushes, vaginal dryness, itchy skin that people talk about, mood changes, hot night sweats, day hot flushes, change in mood, anxiety, depression, low mood, high mood, irritable, agitated, bowel changes, gut habit changes, acid reflux. There's so much that goes on that I had no clue about, especially when it comes to the gut changes, which I'm going to talk about in this video. How do they diagnose perimenopause? They purely go by symptoms alone. Uh, this is in the NICE guidelines. So if you're struggling with your symptoms and your doctor's saying, nah, you're too young for it, get them to look at the NICE guidelines. They have been updated. You don't need a blood test for hormones. They literally go by period changes and your symptoms that you're having. Um, and they might do some other blood tests for different things because it could be anything causing all of these problems. Um, so they will look into it further. And then if everything comes back clear, which is what they did with me, then it's, yeah, they just say, yeah, it's, it's probably perimenopause. And the reason they don't do the blood tests anymore in perimenopause, I mean, some GPs might do it still. I have seen when I've been doing blood, some people come for their hormones and things like that. Um, but the reason why they tend not to and go by symptoms is because the blood tests um, can be really inaccurate because your hormones are fluctuating so much so it's not going to be an accurate representation so they just go by your symptoms and try and manage the symptoms and things like that instead so i have here understanding menopause book it's a bit tatty sorry but in here there's a symptom checker which i've ticked to show you i don't mind sharing that's fine that that is all my symptoms right now and that's not just the only bit there's more pages this is my second page of symptoms all of that I've got majority of the symptoms on this blinking list all at once. <laughs> Weird because I was struggling with um, headaches and things like that. So I went to the opticians um, and they checked my eyes and everything. They said, it's fine, but you've got blocked tear ducts um, and dry eyes. And they said to use a hot compress and things like that to help manage it every day. And I can get um, eye drops if I want to. My gums have been worse over the last year and had to have a tooth out last year. And then all my gut problems, like I was saying earlier, I've had a load of digestive problems over the last 18 months, which have been horrific, actually. Bloating, getting really full after I'm eating, all this acid reflux, constipation galore is horrific. Sorry, too much information, but I'm going to overshare. It's been horrific and no one's really looked into why or anything like that. And it's been really frustrating. People just sort of have just said, eat more fibre. I'm eating more fibre, drink more. I'm drinking more. Everything that I'm doing is not working for what I'm doing. I'm one of those people. If I'm going to the doctors, it's because I've already tried everything at home that I know I should be trying. And then I'm going to the doctors. And then they just throw... Um, constipation tablets at me and well, laxative sorry and acid reflux tablets and things like that and I'm not getting anywhere until this last one to two months I want to say but I went in and I saw a female doctor who knew everything about menopause and she was so good and so knowledgeable and oh she's changed my life genuinely and I've put that in my feedback uh, to the surgery it makes a real difference when you get a good doctor but anyway she was explaining to me about menopause that and the it's because of the fluctuations and the hormones and everything this is why it's affecting your eyes your gums your stomach it affects your stomach because we have estrogen receptors in our stomach so when everything's fluctuating all this is fluctuating however to manage that 
uh, I need a complete diet change. I did like this little food diary and I took it to her and I told her everything I eat and then I have snacks in between meals because I'm getting really hungry between meals. Um, and she said, you need to change your diet. I was like, what? I thought I ate really good. You know, I'm having fruit, I'm having veg. So what did my diet used to look like? I used to just have plain cornflakes, plain cornflakes in the, in the morning. It says on the box, the green is fine. It's, it's okay to eat the plain, the bog standard. You know, I'm not eating uh, Cocoa Pops and other sort of high sugary sort of foods. Um, sometimes I'll have porridge, not always, but sometimes I'll have porridge as well. I used to have bran flakes to try and increase the fiber and things in the morning, but that just made everything worse. So I had to stick to bare minimum. So I swapped to cornflakes. And then I found that I was getting really, really hungry midday, um, not midday, before lunch, in between breakfast and dinner. So I was having a banana for a little snack in between, or an orange sometimes. And then I'd have my lunch, and then I'd have a sandwich, and then I'd go on, and then I'd get hungry again, sort of between lunch and dinner time in the evening. So then I'd have something like a yoghurt, Activia yoghurt, or something to help my bowels. Sometimes a bit of fruit, sometimes a biscuit, a bit of cake. I'm not always good. And then in the evening, I would have well, whatever I'd have for, for um, dinner. Usually it would be some sort of carb heavy, heavy um, dinner. So something with pastas, um, potatoes, rice, arm breads, things like that. It'd be carb heavy and then veg and things like that with it. When I looked into um, what I was eating with the doctor, she also showed me this really good app called the Freshwell app. I'm going to put the link below. Please download it because it's incredible and you'll be shocked at what's in there. Anyway, I, I looked at the app. I was shocked to see everything I was eating was either carbs or sugar. Everything. And this is why all my digestive and everything's going crazy because my sugar levels are constantly going like this. They don't know what to do with themselves because I'm having food all the time, all day, and it's all sugar, carb heavy. So my sugar levels going like this in the body. So no wonder I'm feeling an absolute mess. Um, and I didn't know this. I thought I was doing good by eating fruit and things like that. Bananas, five spoon of sugars in bananas. And I had no idea that a banana was so high in sugar. I thought I was being good. When I looked at the back of my cornflakes box at the hidden ingredients, on the front it says it's good hidden ingredients full of carbs and sugar again so i'm literally having carb sugar carb sugar carb sugar and everything's a mess and now i understand why so i've changed my life and it i can't lie i've been doing it three weeks now i think and it's been really challenging to do but i'm really motivated to do it because i'm sick of feeling unwell and having all those problems I would rather do what I've got to do with my diet than go through that ever again. So I've massively changed my diet now. In the morning, I've, I've swapped now to either having Greek yogurt, full fat Greek yogurt, uh, with berries, usually raspberries and strawberries, because they're my favourite, and blueberries. I mix it up. And then I make my own homemade granola, which is the best thing I've ever made. I'm absolutely a little bit addicted to it right now. Yeah, so homemade granola, fruit and my Greek yogurt in the morning. Sometimes I'll flip it and I'll do eggs and avocado on this bread thing that I make now from the app. It's almond flour bread. Really nice if you're having it with something. It's not nice on its own. Or sometimes I've had an omelette as well. So some sort of protein mix instead of the Greek yogurt and everything in the morning. I'm also doing intermittent fasting, um, which is a really good thing. I'm going to put a link below for the doctor on YouTube that does this for more information. But I'm leaving longer periods between my dinner and my breakfast, so between 13 and 17 hours. So I'm not skipping meals, actually I have skipped breakfast sometimes, but I do a long period between the dinner and the breakfast and that's really helped as well. But it depends on if I'm working, what I'm working, how many hours are in the day, what I'm doing, what my lunch breaks are and things, and I work around it. So there are days where I will just completely skip breakfast, but then I'll have a heavier lunch with the omelette and things like that. So I do it that way, if that makes sense. Um, and then if I have a lunch, it'll be just plain salad. So it'll be um, a salad with, there's like a dressing recipe in the app as well. So I use like this mustard and oil dressing on it. And I usually have that with something like cheese or tuna or egg, just egg salad, things like that. I'll, I'll have that. Or I'll have this bread thing with my eggs and my avocado or something on it. And then in the evening, I will have um, usually either chicken, 
fish or some sort of veggie meal but then i will i'm not having rice anymore um avoiding all bread so i'm not having bread or wraps or anything like that anymore um occasionally i will have some potatoes but i've reduced my intake of potato so i'm trying to have between 30 and 80 kilograms i think it is of potato each day so I just have a little tiny bit of potato um if i'm going to have anything i'm just sticking to that now a lot of the time i'm happy just to have a load of veg because it's really really filling if you get a good variety of veg and then your fish on the side absolutely fantastic but yes please 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 look at the Freshwell app because it is incredible do the modules so there's a there's a page on there I can't remember what it says there's a load of modules on there to um learn about the sugars and carbs and what's hidden and stuff um, and there's some little things that shows you what the green foods are so what's low in sugar what's medium sugar and then what's high in sugar you will be sugars sugars i tell you to find out the amount of sugar in everything you eat is just i i couldn't believe it like i knew there was sugar in things but not to this extent and the whole traffic lights the whole traffic light system that we're telling patients to follow for a healthy diet is completely wrong because there is hidden sugars when you read the labels you're looking at the traffic light you're saying yeah green 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 orange maybe and you're thinking yeah this this looks all right look at the ingredients it's full of all this crap that we don't need in our diet that all these hidden foods that companies or, or hidden ingredients even that companies are throwing into our foods is making us sick and i need i think the whole country needs to wake up and realize this everything from what we eat prepared meals chicken beef pork all of our meats that we eat, eat plowed full of crap cloud full of antibiotics, preservatives, everything to, to plump them up and keep them fresher for longer. Um, I, I don't know if you know this already, but animals are given a shitload of antibiotics so that they don't get sick, they don't get infections and things like that to keep them fresh for longer. And as a result, we are digesting that. And people wonder why we've got an antibiotic resistance. Because we are what we eat. Um, and we're eating all this crap so i know it's really really expensive but if you can try and buy organic uh, grass-fed animals if you're gonna eat meat i don't eat a lot of meat anyway i try and i try and restrict it and balance it between meat and veg um, so i do a bit of both to be honest but yeah that's just some food for thought anyway treatments for menopause slash perimenopause what am i on at the minute uh, so I am only 40 so I think doctors are a bit wary of going hard with the HRT and with every medication you should always realistically start low and work your way up. We should always be on the minimum hormones needed for our bodies or minimum medication needed for our bodies. Also you've got room to work with it so if you start low you've got room to go up and change and things like that. But anyway some of the common most common ones you would have heard is oestrogen uh, progestogen they're the, they're the two main things people have for hrt for the uh, menopause estrogen comes in a variety of forms it comes in tablets it comes in patches it comes in gels all different forms um, and they all work in different ways it's trying to find what's going to suit your body and your needs best out of everything because what one works for someone might not work for you so it's a bit of trial and error it's the same with contraceptives um not one thing suits all so people will react differently to different things and it's about finding what's right for you and all that jazz there's research now as well that shows that they're both helpful when you're going through menopause it's good for the heart and things like that so yeah it's not as harmful as people thought having hrt options um so don't be afraid to start it if you're really struggling with the symptoms and everything give it a go because it could literally be a lifesaver especially when um you're hearing people with severe depression anxiety they're borderline suicidal if you are that person get help please please get help and start something because it's better than yeah not trying and just suffering with all of those symptoms which is awful i know it's awful i'm going through them myself um so trying something is better than nothing i think 
But anyway, because I'm young-ish, I'm 40 now, they want to start low, lowest dose possible and then increase. So I've started on the combined pill. So we've not gone full-blown HRT as such. And the combined pill has both estrogen and progesterone in it. So it should help with all of the symptoms I'm experiencing. So she went through all of my symptoms and look at the different pill options and what's going to help with what, with what I'm experiencing. And she's come with um, something called the Zuli pill. It's a new pill, actually, a really low dose. Let me grab it. Hang on. I was close. It's the Zoli pill. I've never heard of this pill, actually, ever. And I used to work as in sexual health, so this must be quite new. But this is a combined, like, really low dose uh, pill of estrogen and progesterone, and it's going to hopefully help me. She has told me not to start it straight away, start it, or I can start it straight away, but it might have that risk of making your periods a bit worse. So it's better to start a pill on your first day of your first period to help regulate your periods. Um, so I'm going to wait whenever my period comes. I mean, it was due this month and I've missed it. So at the minute, they're every other month give or take so it'll probably be next month that I start that so I might do an update video to see how I'm going with it if anyone's interested in this sort of thing like are you interested am I just ranting and you're just there like shut up Claire tell us all about GP nursing <laughs> I'm sorry um anyway yeah I hope that uh it was some sort of helpful I don't know if I've covered everything I can't remember what I've said the brain fog brain fog's bad um but basically menopause is hell for some people and some people, it's a breeze. They don't get any symptoms, nothing. They, they breeze through it. I'm just one of those really unfortunate people that I'm going through all these health symptoms. Um, but it's fine. I'm going to ride it. Ride the waves until you get to the seashore and watch the sunset. That's what I'm going to be doing. Um, but hopefully, yeah, I've given you some information about the symptoms. So I really wanted to show the symptoms that people don't talk about, especially with the gut health. Um, and low mood is horrific. I'm experiencing low mood, lack of motivation. That's why I don't vlog as much anymore. I don't do as much anymore because I physically, I physically can't. I want to. My brain's there saying, I really want to do this. Like I miss being vlogging and things like that and getting excited about things. I'm just not anymore. Like it's just me, whatever. Um, so the days that I do feel good, I'm going to do a video like today. <laughs> I'm feeling good. I'm feeling all right. I've got my arse in gear. Um, but anyway, I hope that's been helpful. If there's anything else you want me to go into and cover, let me know and I will well put the comment below to tell me um, so I know. And yeah, I'll, I'll try and do it whenever I can. Um, but yeah, just let me know. But for now, I hope you all have a great day and I shall see you later.